Hello there. I'm Jeff. How are you? Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. Today, listen, don't go anywhere. Today we're going to be talking about Adobe Premiere Pro Beta for the M1 Max. This right here is an M1 MacBook Pro um, with touch bar and all that junk. You know, it's just it's just an M1, right? We've also got an M1 Mac Mini. Uh, we are m one out the wazoo. But before we get into this video and start talking about how this beta is going, let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor. I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Havoc Shield, who offers small business cybersecurity from plan to proof. And is it time to get serious about your small business cybersecurity? Havoc Shield standard plan includes penetration testing, endpoint security, dark web monitoring, and InfoSec policy templates. So go ahead and check out Havoc Shield. Their information is in the description. Awesome. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's hop right into it. Let's talk about the M1 Max and, and Adobe Premiere Pro. So, of course, you know, uh, people who use M1 Max, they're developers. They are students. They are content creators. They are Photoshop nerds. They are business people. There's all sorts of people that use M1 Max, just like there's all sorts of people that use Windows, right? And so, but we don't care about those guys. We don't care about the Windows guys. We just care about the M1 Mac users right now. So Adobe, of course, you know, not to lose market share or not to have people not use their product on Apple because there are so many people that do use Apple. And so that they don't hop over to, you know, like, um, Final Cut, you know, of course, they come up with a beta version of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you know anything about Adobe, you'll know that Premiere Pro seems like it's in beta 24-7, even with an app that's not beta. So, keep that going in, in the, into this uh, conversation between us. So, in the background, you're going to see uh, me working on a video that was released here on the channel using this beta version. And so I want to say a couple things about this beta version, and then we're going to talk about performance. So this beta version was actually really smooth. I was quite surprised. It didn't act like a beta version of Adobe. I wasn't going in hoping that it was going to be great, but I went into it hoping that it would at least work a little bit. And what happened when, while using this was it was actually pretty seamless. Um, I had just a good experience using Adobe on my M1 Mac as what I did using Adobe on uh, my Windows machine. It was very smooth, the playback was great, it was quick, it was snappy. I mean, I, I didn't think I was using a $699 Mac Mini, I thought I was using like a two or $3,000 desktop. And just the, the kind of performance that I was getting. Uh, working on, on, on these apps, and, or working on the uh, apps, working on this video and stuff that I was doing. And it was, it was great. It was really well, it was seamless, it was smooth. And that's where it stopped. After the first video that I used, I was convinced that this beta version was awesome. After that video, I started working with it uh, to do more videos. And after that, um, Adobe would start to not recognize my external drive. Adobe would start to not recognize my video formats. Adobe would want to be closed and then opened again because it couldn't um, recognize the project that I was working on. And then it would start throwing errors like crazy. I mean, like you'd be working, it's just boom, 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 errors out everywhere. Errors. And I don't know if it's because of, of the memory uh, maybe it was like a memory leak exception or something was going on that after that first time of using Adobe, it, it, was, it just started spazzing out like crazy. And then it wasn't really usable. I mean, you'd be able to do stuff. It wasn't as smooth. And you would start having issues with, with these errors popping up. And like I said, like it wouldn't recognize drives and things like that. It was a huge, huge annoyance. But the time that it did work, it was awesome. However, however, that being said, Adobe released an update to their beta and it fixed that. 
it fixed the problems with not recognizing videos, with not recognizing my drive, my external drive, uh, and then the errors popping up all the time. It fixed that. So Adobe's actively working on it. And then they released another update, like just a couple days after that, that really made it, um, that increased the performance and stuff like that, that made it even better uh, with the media encoder and things like that. So Adobe's actively working on this, uh, just from the sheer amount of updates that they've put out since I started using this beta. So let's talk about performance then, since we know that they're actively working on it, that they're fixing the issues that I'm seeing, uh, because I was sending the reports and stuff like that. So of course, you know, they are fixing those. It's, it's turning out to be great the way it's working right now. So let's talk about performance. For a 15 minute video uh, in 1080p with, you know, doing a lot of audio work, a lot of uh, lighting work, things of that nature, it took six and a half minutes to render that out at H.264, highest render uh, quality, et cetera, like that with both the audio and the video. It took six and a half minutes. That's really cool, that's, that's pretty quick. I mean, that's less than half the time uh, for a 1080p video. So the performance is there, I mean, it's really quick. It's not as fast per se as like a, a 3950X, you know, a 16 core 32 thread with 64 gigs of RAM. It's not as quick as it, but it's really quick for a $699 machine. I mean, you can't really argue with just how quick it is. Um, so then I wanted to see how it did compared to say, Final Cut Pro. And so in Final Cut, I knew that it was going to be faster because it would have to be. If you're Apple, you are not going to re release a new product with one of your main professional applications that you put out yourself not being faster than the competition. It's silly, it's not a, it's not a great business move. So <clears throat> I put in a 50 minute video. I knew that 15 minutes wasn't long enough. So I put in a 50 minute video and to export a 50 minute video at H.264, you know, cranked up to the nines on how well it exported and everything to share is what they call it with Final Cut Pro. To share a video at Final Cut Pro that's 50 minutes long, it took 10 minutes and two seconds. So Adobe, six and a half minutes for a 15 minute video. Final Cut Pro, 10 minutes and two seconds for a 50 minute video. Now, if you are good at math, you will immediately recognize that it only took three and a half extra minutes to render something that was over three times longer, okay? And so if you do math real quick, you know, um, it took roughly 50% extra time to do something that was uh, about 350% extra, so it's 350% more um, is how that kind of works out if you want to look at percentages. So that being said, um, Adobe's working great. They are fixing it. Final Cut's still faster. It really is. It's amazing how well these uh, M1s do with Final Cut. But at the end of the day, once this gets out of beta, I, I think that they're gonna really um, be able to catch up to, to Apple. I really do. I hope they do. I hope they get close. I hope it's something that's really quick. Like I said, I mean, six and a half minutes to do a 15 minute 1080p video is not bad. That's really good. I mean, it really is. That's really good. Now, 10 minutes to do a 50 minute video is phenomenal. I would like to see Adobe get to the phenomenal stage as well. And so if you are having any reservations about using Adobe, Adobe on your new M1 Mac, um, put those reservations to the side, go ahead, download the beta. Um, there's you know, instructions online on how to download the beta. Go ahead, download the beta, give it a try, see how um, your mileage may vary different from mine, but you know, go ahead and give it a try. Uh, that way you can know for sure if Adobe's gonna work for you. And listen, the only thing you're really losing is, I guess, the time that you put into using the beta. But it really does, it's working great. Um, go ahead, leave a like and comment. Let me know if you've tried the Adobe beta. Go ahead and let me know what you think about the performance of the M1 Max. Go ahead and let me know if you want to hear or see more videos like this in the future to where we go ahead and we talk about uh, these professional applications with um, these machines. So go ahead, leave a comment, 
leave a like and subscribe for more. The subscribes really help me. They allow me to keep bringing content to you, which is what I want to do in 2021. I want to bring some phenomenal extra content to you all. And I want to give you uh, all the thanks in the world for helping me get over a thousand subscribers. We're almost to 2000 now. So go ahead and help me hit that number as well. That 2000, I really appreciate it. And go ahead and subscribe. And as always, keep it real.